Hey everybody, how's it going? So we got a new boat and we're gonna do some maintenance on it to get ready to get this on the water. So what we got is a 2006 Fisher aluminum John boat with a side console and a Tahatsu four stroke motor on it. So the nice thing with this motor is it's got power tilt and trim and it's a four stroke. So it'll be quiet and also fuel efficient. And we've got a boat ramp with the river right below us. So pretty excited about it and we're ready to get this thing in the water. What we're gonna do today is show you this motor and do some maintenance to it. So the boat itself is a 2006 uh, going by the serial number and the model number on this motor. I think this motor is a uh, 17 and how I got that was I found this chart. Let me see if I can see it. Okay, so I found this chart online and what they use is a X for zero and then it's A is one all the way up through the alphabet. So of course I think they stop at nine, but this serial number is A, G on the bottom of it. And I did have the sheriff come out and run this uh, boat and the motor because the BMV required me to. But anyway, just to make sure that nothing was stolen. And A being a one and a G being a seven, it should be a 17 motor. So Tahatsu does have a website that you can put your model number and serial number in and it will send you an email back telling you exactly what uh, year your motor is. And I have filled that out, but they haven't replied yet. So let's change this motor oil let's change this oil okay so the oil we're going to use is the quicksilver four-stroke marine engine oil which is 10w40 and then we've got our filter which is a hf199 uh, and you can get both of these off amazon which is what i did all righty so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to Try to get, this is the drain plug, and I want to get that so that it goes into the pan without running all over the side of the motor. So what I'm going to do is tilt this motor up, and then turn the wheel this way. Now it should drip into that pan without getting all over the side of the motor. Oil drain plug is a 16 millimeter. So let's take this out. Like that. I need more where that's gonna go. A little stiff. It wasn't gonna fall out, that's for sure. You know what I'm gonna do? Pick this pan up. And then with the washer. So we'll let that drain. And I'll take the motor cover off. Take the oil fill cap off. Let air into the motor. So the oil filter is right here. And let's see, I've got a small wrench. I think I'll take that off. That is a tight little fit in there. There it goes though. Luckily, whoever put this on before me didn't kill it going on. Thought I saw a turn. Yeah, there it goes. That for sure is a tight fit. Oh, 
Okay, let's make sure that these filters are the same. Okay, so while that's finishing draining, we'll look at these filters. They seem to be the exact same size. Pull the plastic off the new one. And what I'll do is put these together, spin a little bit, that'll put oil on the new O-ring for the new filter. And one difference is I use channel locks to get this filter off. This new filter has got a nut on the bottom of it. That's gonna be nice. Okay, so it's a 17 millimeter socket. Would've been nice if they'd made it 16, the same as the drain plug, but just, we can't have everything. Okay, so I'm gonna put the new filter on. And since it has a 17 millimeter nut on the bottom of it, I'm just gonna use that to tighten it. And I'm still just gonna put it about hand tight. There we go. And I'll check it for leaks, but having a socket on the end of that, a nut on the end of that, is pretty ingenious. And it'll definitely make changing this out easier next time. And so if anybody wants to know, again, this came from Amazon as an oil chain set after I Googled to Hatsu 20 horsepower motor, but so it's a high flow filtro, I guess, HF199. I've never seen that before, but I like it. We'll put the oil drain bolt in again, now that it's quit dripping. All right, snugged up, we're ready to add oil. Okay, and the oil, is again this quick silver four stroke oil 10w40 and that has a large enough hole that i think i could probably pour it in there without the use of a funnel but since i'm in my barn it's also my house i'm going to go ahead and use a funnel and i'm going to pull a dipstick and wipe it off It's supposed to take a quart. I'm gonna put most of this quart in and then check the oil. Make sure I don't overfill it. The oil that came out of there was pretty clean. So I'm thinking they might've changed this oil uh, recently. Or, and this also looks like it, it doesn't look like this motor's got a lot of time on it. That might be wishful thinking on my part, but I'm always an optimist. There's no reason not to be. <laughs> it's too easy. Life hack number one. Okay, so let's check, see where that took that. There are two holes in the dipstick for the level. And it's barely above the first hole, so. I'd say we can put the rest of that cord in. Caps back on. Check the level again. What I Googled, it said it was supposed to take a quart, and it is right to the full line. Uh, the only thing I'm wondering is if there's any oil in that filter, and if there's not how low it's going to go. So I'm going to bump this. I'm not going to start it, just turn it over. Okay. That should have circulated some oil. Let's see what we've got now.
Okay, and it's barely below the little dot. It's like right there where my fingernail's at, and there's the dot, the hole for full. So I'm gonna say that's good. And of course, you should always check your oil before you go out. Okay, so the next thing let's do is let's start it up and run it and check the water pump. Okay, so the Tahatsu has a plug right there that you can screw a garden hose into and uh, run it, and that will put water through the motor to cool it. And then you also can use ears on the flanges down here and run it, and that will put water through the motor to cool it. When I bought this, where I bought it, the guy didn't have any water to his house. He said his well went out that morning. When I got here, I put ears on it, and those ears can be tricky. Sometimes they don't uh, feed water in the right place or enough volume or whatever, and you may or may not get uh, water out the water pump. When I put the ears on it, I didn't get any water out the water pump. But when I put it in this port, I got plenty of water through it. So I played with it a little bit, and what I decided to do to check it is I've already bought a new water pump impeller because you're supposed to change those fairly regularly anyway. Okay, now that the oil is changed, let's go ahead and test run it and we'll check our water pump. If the water pump is good, water should come out right there. And we've got water coming out. I wonder how big a mess it'd make by putting it here. Pretty big mess. <laughs> that was not very bright. There's your first. Back in neutral. And I don't have to shut the garage door. Ooh, wait a minute. No water's coming out. Oh, it might be because I've lowered the water button. Okay, so the only thing left to do is I'm going to go ahead and replace the lower unit oil just to be certain that it's good. Let that drip out a little bit. Hopefully into the bucket. And I can roll that water out of here. Okay, so running that little test, the water pump on this is good, but I've already bought the new impeller, and they say you should really do that like once a year anyway, so since this motor is new to me, I'm gonna go ahead and put a new impeller for the water pump. Change the water impeller. You have to take off these four, two on the other side, 10 millimeter bolts, and then pull that lower unit off the motor. Okay, my understanding was that had nuts on it. That's actually a bolt. So, no real matter, but not what I expected. Some of these Tahatsus have nuts on here with studs up into the lower unit. This one has bolts. The advantages of the studs are sometimes these bolts get galled up in there and become a pain to get out or they bring the threads with them. But we'll throw some anti-seize on there. Awesome. Okay, now that the bolts are out. We need to disconnect the shifter, which looks like it's about an eight. Yeah, I think it's an eight. 
Okay, so we also need to remove the shifter, which is an eight millimeter. Shifter linkage, I guess. Okay, so that's removed. Now this should just pull off, so let's see how that goes. There it is. Okay, and our water pump is inside this, so we're gonna put this in the bench vise and bring you along. Okay, so I've got the lower unit put in the bench vise with a couple pieces of wood to keep from being, you know, steel against my aluminum lower unit. And this is the cover that holds the water pump impeller that we're gonna change. Okay, so we're going back with our 10 millimeter wrench. Or you could use the socket. And all of the bolts are the same length. So now we're going to raise up on this. And the impeller's coming out with it. Okay, so here's the impeller wedged in there. Let's see where the keyway is still in it. Okay, so pull this old impeller out. And I'll tell you what, that doesn't look too bad. It'll definitely go on the shelf as a spare. There is the new impeller, so it's a little thicker. A little heavier duty rubber. Okay, the kit I got has a new little cup, but that doesn't really seem like it wants to come out of there. And I don't see anything wrong with it, so I'm just going to use the old one. The kit I've got also comes with three new bolts, which is weird because it takes four. <laughs> uh, I've got a gasket and a new keyway. Okay, I'm gonna put some Vaseline grease on this. Slide it down over the keyway. Okay, put this piece back on. And with that not fitting, they say the thing to do is turn the propeller clockwise, which I have to move my piece of wood. <laughs> So turn that clockwise while slowly sliding the bracket down or the cover, the housing down. It's there, throw in the screws. I'm gonna throw just a little bit of anti-seize on these bolts. Don't know that they need it, but I can't see where it hurt. This anti-seize, man, a dab will definitely do it. Don't overdo it. Stuff gets everywhere.
snug these down. I think I'll do it. Okay, and they say to put grease on the end of that shaft, and I can see that there is grease on it. So we'll take this back over and put it in the motor. Okay, I'm gonna put anti-seize on these bolts that go into the lower unit. Because I don't want to deal with stripping the threads out of the next time I do it. Again, this anti seize man, it's just a little day I will do it. Okay, so I put some regular grease on the uh, splines of the shaft. Okay, so here's where we're going. That is the hole for the gear shifter linkage. Uh, that brass hole is where the water port lines up and then way down in there, is the hole for the dry shaft. Okay, and as you can see, maybe the dry shaft turns with the prop. So we'll slide this thing in there again. Something's not right. Something's not right. There it goes. There we go. Okay, now I wish I had a bolt. <laughs> okay, I guess it's not going to fall out of there. Let's get them all started. Assuming that everything's going to work, this is the first time I've ever placed a water pump in an outboard, or actually, really ever worked on an outboard at all. Uh, and I would give that job about a level of difficulty of about a two or something. So, really, no reason anybody that doesn't change their own oil in their own car wouldn't be able to do that. And I'd hate to think what a shop would charge for that. But there might be some warranty reasons why you'd want to do that. Uh, obviously, this for me is a used motor and it has no warranty. Okay, so they're all snug, now I'm gonna tighten them up to, I'm gonna say about a half a Ooga Dooga. <laughs> if I had to guess, I'd say somewhere around uh, 20 foot pounds. Okay, so that's on and tight. Double check all of them. It would be embarrassing to have your prop leave you midstream of a river trip. Okay, that's plenty tight. Okay, so the last thing that I'm gonna do on this motor is drain the lower unit oil and refill it. So let's do that. Oop. Almost forgot, it would be nice to have the gear shift work. I wanna make sure everybody sees what's going on here. 
Okay, so the gear shift linkage, uh, right now this is in drive. And basically what happened was instead of just having it stay in neutral while I changed that seal, I got it into drive. So the little drive shaft's not lining up. Oh, I'd like for it to. So I'm gonna put that in drive. We should suck that part up in there a little bit. Now I should be able to line them up and thread them together. I'm gonna go down just a hair because what I'd really like is for them to be pretty flush together. So let's go back towards neutral. Okay, I think that's pretty close. Hmm. Not at all, it's not. So let's go back a little bit off now. Okay, that's close. That's very close. So now we'll put these two pieces together. Lock them together. Make sure I don't block your view. Okay, now that should be neutral. Let's see if it is. And it is, excellent. Okay, so the controller up front says it's neutral and the prop says it's neutral. Let's go forward. And it's in gear, awesome. Make sure these the adjustment is tightened up again. So it just doesn't come undone. And it's tight. Okay, so that's good. Now we'll lower the motor down and change the grease in the lower unit. Okay, so we're going to drain the oil out of the lower unit drain bolt here and a vent there so let's we'll see if these come out oh yeah that was nice let's put this on the floor right there and that oil looks brand new too wow i think it's possible that somebody did services right before we bought it Pretty nice, no milkiness or chalkiness in that oil at all. And when you're doing this, make sure you recycle any of the oils. Is this Quicksilver Gear Lube, it's a SAE 90. And we're gonna use this pump to pump it in there. We're gonna put oil in through the bottom hole until it comes out the top. Okay, we've got our pump installed in our bottle of lube. And then this is kind of cool. I don't know how it's gonna work necessarily, but it has an adapter that screws in. So now let's pump oil in. And we're gonna do that until the oil comes out that hole. about half of it in there. And it's coming out the top. So I'm gonna give it one more pump. Okay. And put this hole back in here.
Okay, and my hope is it kind of acts like a straw. And then let it come out the bottom. So let's see, maybe do one more pump. Okay. Now I'll unscrew this as fast as I can. Okay, that lower unit is changed. Got quite a bit of cleanup to do though. Hands are so uh, greasy now, oily. Can't turn the screwdriver without the rag. Okay, well, make sure this bottom's tight. Excellent. All righty. So that should complete the maintenance. Then what we'll do is just check and make sure that we do have everything done correctly. So it pretty much ended up using exactly half that quart. So I will put the pump and the quart away for next time. Okay, so it's running and we've got water coming out of the uh, hole. So it looks pretty good. Let's see if we go in here, go in here, make a heck of a mess. Okay, so here is the hose hooked up to the flush port and it also has water, actually quite a bit more coming out. Of course that's 60 PSI on that garden hose. So. Well that's another way to do it. Okay so definitely check with uh, somebody that knows more than me. I'm not a boat mechanic or nothing but if you don't have ears and you want to run it if you put water in through that flush port it comes out there and it also runs out through the inlets down there that it uses when it's just running in a lake so your mileage may vary but there's another way to get water into that engine Alrighty, so that's our video of our 2006 Fisher side console John boat, which we just picked up. And with our 2017 Tahatsu four stroke motor maintenance. So thanks a lot for watching. We're gonna put this boat in the river tomorrow. So don't forget to subscribe and catch that. And we sure appreciate your comments. Have a good one y'all, be safe, take care. See ya.